And so we try to follow the same process every year. We just try to improve upon it when we can. Uh, Jeremiah is going to be our MC. Okay, Jeremiah is a Marine. He's a Marine and he's a student and he's a volunteer here at headquarters as well. And just for transparency's sake, he does campaign with Mr. Bowen. Um, but he is a man of honor and he appreciates all the candidates and will treat everyone fairly. Okay? So, um, does everybody have their questions marked on their cards? All the questions <laughs> will be asked on the cards on one of these and you'll hand those to Jeremiah and then he'll read them. Now, there's been a rumor going around that we water down the questions. We do not water down the questions, okay? If there is a controversial candidate, which we've had in the past, um, we did not allow anyone to attack them. This is a safe zone. Headquarters is a safe zone. This is where every candidate can come in here and be welcomed as a guest, and that's what we treat them is as a guest, okay? If you want to attack a candidate when you leave this premises, feel free to do so. I'm sure they can hold their own, but in here, this is safe zone, okay? <laughs> so, all right? Please don't. So just have your questions, and, and if Jeremiah doesn't understand a question, he will ask you what you meant or what it says. Sometimes we can't read people's handwriting. So, yeah. so he w he might ask a couple questions before he asks the, the question of the candidate. Don't worry, my hair my hieroglyphics yeah. is just as bad. Yeah. So I'm and not, I'm and we just do that so that it can stay very organized and so people aren't yelling out questions and, and so we just want it to be as organized as possible. Okay? Okay, yeah, so right. don't block him. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for being here today, joining us in a wonderful occasion. Normally, politics is seen as a very dirty thing where everyone's attacking each other, throwing mud, and other such things. Today, we are simply sitting here as a small community, as Lake County Republicans, trying to see who it is that deserves the vote. Obviously, these are two wonderful men up here today. They have come up here trying their best to support the Republican Party and Lake County in its efforts to make a better union and a better place in general. I appreciate your time, and I appreciate these gentlemen's time as well that you are both giving your time, energy, and a lot of effort to go out there and actually try and help Florida become a better state. Thank you very much. They will both be giving a 15-minute introduction of themselves. If you have any time or any sort of uh, papers on there, we gladly encourage you to write anything down considering what their platform is. But, uh, yes, we will start with Mr. Evo. Okay. Perfect. Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, yeah, jump on there. Yeah. Um, guys, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Evo Nsua, and I am a candidate for the Florida State Senate District 13. Um, I am a longtime Lake County resident. I, my family and I moved here in 2001, and previously before that, my family actually comes from West Africa. We are immigrants. My mom is a, a family physician, and my dad is a civil engineer, and they taught their children that education is the number one thing that you get to make it in life, and that no one else is going to hand you anything. So um, we've taken that. That, uh, lesson and we've essentially excelled in it. I've been lucky enough to grow up in this area, went to East Ridge High School, went off to Florida State University where I was able to play collegiate football for a number of years, then moved to Washington DC because I wanted to learn about what makes our country so great. And I was able to. I was able to learn under former Congressman Ron DeSantis for a number of years before deciding that I wanted to come home and I wanted to get back to my community and that's what I did. I was elected to Claremont City Council and I served two terms there. Um, and I was the only person on council to vote against the raising of taxes during those number of years. And I realized that uh, as I got a little bit older and I saw just the people around me and my residents just doing better and doing well, I realized that I could do even more. And that's why I decided to throw my hat in the ring and run for the Florida State Senate. So I am a candidate. You know, I am a to-be father. My wife is actually giving birth in probably about a month or so to her very first, um, and that's why she is not able to be here. She says that she wishes she could be here, but I'm very excited because we've got a very 
beautiful little girl, at least that I can tell from the ultrasound. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, she says that she looks more like her than me, but we'll, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Um, but as for my policy platform, my policy issues, you guys can kind of read on it from, um, from my literature. I'm pro-life, pro-family, um, pro-2A, and I want to make sure that Florida is in a good place for the future and make sure that we have an actual new energized voice that can represent Lake County and the things that we actually want and need for the future. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about me. That's what you guys are for. You can definitely ask me all the questions you want. I'm not afraid of any question and I won't run from it. So thank you guys so much. I am asking for your vote and ready to talk. To you. So. Very nice. Thank you. And what is pro two-way? Uh, two-way? Two-way. Like, uh, two Oh, two My guns, like the right to bear arms. Oh, yeah, two A. Yeah, two A. Sorry, Second Amendment. <laughs> it sounded like you said two A. Oh no, two A. Sorry. Two A. Sorry. Two A. I also support two A. Right? Yes, 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 yes. I like the way common sense candidate, right? Here. Yes, exactly. Two A. There you go. Two A. But yes, as as you know, as a former local elected. Shorter than Second Amendment. Exactly. You know, um, I know how important it is to actually know your residents and know your constituency and actually know the issues that they care about. So that is why I would like to be your state senator. Um, I'm not the Tallahassee establishment candidate, but I, I do know how to work a room and I do know how to make sure we can be effective and pass good policy to make sure our conservative values are being pushed forward. So thank you guys. Can you describe what the no, it wasn't. map. Well, oh, yes. Well, yeah, there is. I should have did that. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's Some all right. Oh, no. from a, believe me, i got to be useful for something. Look, look, look. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you may direct yourselves to the uh, back, well, to your le back left here. The entirety of the District 13 for the State Senate seat is all of Lake County and the western portion of Orange County, or at least a small western portion of it. So, Wherever you live, as long as you are a Lake County resident or possibly live in the Lake Orange County area in the western part, you can vote for these candidates and such. So it applies fully to your constituents on there that you would actually be able to have effects by what they say and what they're actually going for, and they will affect the entirety of the county. I think it's on the map, I think. Senate District 13. Another one next year. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. This, one, this one's a little harder. This one's a little harder to see, and I wanted to make sure that you saw that it was all well, Orange County. But that isn't all of Orange yeah, County. Yeah, it doesn't show. Yeah, it doesn't show Orange County. But was, I mean, it doesn't Lake show County's all of Lake County. County. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this was after they did the uh, redistricting. Yeah, redistricting. Yeah, those are the new maps yeah. that you can't read. Yes. That's why they have to be explained. <laughs> They're a little tough. They're a little tough. And but yes, the district who, does go. Who is the incumbent and who all are candidates running? Oh, my apologies. So the current incumbent of District 13 is Senator Baxley. Uh, so the other candidates that uh, cannot unfortunately be here today are a uh, representative, Keith Trunow. He is currently exiting session or ending the session up there in Tallahassee. So he is unfortunately unable to attend because of that. And uh, C.J. Blanchett is another candidate that is also going in this race. Yes, Thanks. C.J. couldn't make it today because of another engagement she had. Can, and, um, can we just mention that uh, Baxley is, uh, is he termed out or he's just out. not running again? He's not, he's not yeah. Okay, so that's why, so everybody running is fresh for this yeah. position. Mm -hmm. Exactly, okay. exactly. And they'll be invited at a later date. Um, if they wish to come, and they've all, already been contacted, so it's just a matter of scheduling for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, apart from that, Mr. Bowen. Hi. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bowen Cole, and I'm running for Florida State <laughs> Senate, 13th District. Running for office is personal to me. With the clothes on my back and a dream, I came to America at the age of 19 to attend Michigan State. During a summer break, I went back home to visit my family. I had the American Virgin of Bible with me. That was my gift for my Christian grandmother. My grandmother and I were in jail for two weeks for having the American Bible. After my parents bailed us out, I was facing persecution. Therefore, they encouraged me to leave China and never return. I could never forget my mother's parting word at the airport, do not return. 
So can you imagine if your mother tell you never to return home due to fear of persecution? I have yet to return to China and I don't see returning anytime soon a sacrifice I have to make for my freedom. In China, everyone lives in fear because you never know when the government will interrupt your life. They dictate how many children you are allowed to have, where to live, what you think, and how you say it. They also control business practices. That's why running for state senate is personal to me. Buying and reselling textbooks was my first business in America. Later on, three years later, I sold the business to purchase my first grocery store with three employees. At that time, 2,000 square feet, just double of this space. Three years later, um, today, I own nine grocery stores and providing livelihood for more than 500 families. That's the power of America. I always into politics, but I never thought of running for office. Then one day while I was driving, my wife said that to me. I think you should run. I was like, are you crazy? I wouldn't think I'm a winnable in any political race. She said that to me, she said, your heart in the right place, you will win. I'm the type of person who want to live my life with a purpose. I believe my purpose from God is not successful in business, have a good life. It's also giving back. Before God calls me home, I want to think back. I don't want to think back when I had the chance and didn't do anything. What if I did? I'd rather able to tell my children that when I was 35, I stood out and made a difference. American built by entrepreneurs, not politicians. Today, career, today, lobbyists and special interests fund career politicians campaign and the career politicians, when they get elected, they work for the lobby and special interest. I'm not looking for a job or a career in our government. To me, it's call of duty. That's why I made a commitment not to take any money from lobby or special interest, which gave me the independence to make the right call for the people. That's why I can address and fix some issues the other politicians can't fix. For example, homeowner insurance crisis, lower prescription medications, eliminating tolls. As an immigrant myself, who came here legally, I understand the legal process and the how our immigration should work. Last year, Biden administration allowed over 3.2 million illegal immigrants cross the border, which is, the, which is more people than the entire city of Chicago. In New York, they kick our children out of schools and they use the schools as a facility to host illegal immigrants. I will never, I will never ever let it happen in our state of Florida. When illegal immigrants come to this country, we have no idea who they are and where they come from. They could be criminals, human traffickers, or drug dealers. They put our community in danger. I made a commitment to donate my entire salary. By the way, Democrats want to defend the police and fund illegal immigration. I made a commitment to donate my entire state senator salary to Sheriff Association, which help our law enforcement. I won't allow our law enforcement to be outnumbered by criminals. I have an ability the other candidates don't have. I'm able to recognize socialism agenda right away because I live there in China. Socialism stink is disgusting. When I become a state senator, I will make sure socialism agenda stays a thousand miles away from our beautiful state of Florida. We are way too pretty for that. 
government overreach is the first step leading to socialism. And I will stop that. Thomas Jefferson stated the best. The best government is which governs the least. I may not look like your typical Republic candidate or speak like one. I wasn't even born in the US. I choose to run for office not because it is easy, because it is hard. Today our nation is divided and I believe to unite this nation takes someone like me to send a powerful message that American is not about what you look like, what language you speak, or even your birthplace. American is about an idea and what we believe. That's what I'm running for. I'm running for the love of God. I stand with pro-life and I will fight for unborn babies. I will protect our Second Amendment and the community safety, stop illegal immigration are my priorities. My name is Bowen Cole. Thank you. If I have a couple minutes left, I would like to take some direct questions with one rule. Mm -hmm. Straight straight up, no taser. Oh, oh no, no. No, sir. Uh, we appreciate the okay. we appreciate that sort of thing, but at the end we will ask the more okay. directed questions. Okay. So, so that way we can start the we gotta start off on a good note and then we get into the more poignant ones. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much, sir. Alright. So Speaking of those uh, questions, we are going to start <laughs> yes, with a nicer one. Yeah. We're going to start with a uh, good question here. So what city council or local government agency meetings have you attended and obtained their legislative priorities from? And on top of that, from those question. meetings, what priorities will you support for the local area of Lake County? Shall I go first? Yes, sir. All right. I guess it's pointed to me anyway, since I was on the council. Um, so I, I think one of the oh, I, guess right. I think one of the most important things that somebody can do, especially as a candidate, is to be present in local government. Period. Um, and not just for candidates, but for residents as well. Uh, before I ran for city council, I made sure that I was at every single city council meeting and planning and zoning, so I could have that experience, so I could do research, and I could make sure I knew the actual issues that affected the people around here. So for the city of Claremont, I was at every single city council meeting. I sat in the back, and I said, you know what, one day I'm going to be up there, because we need somebody who's actually going to represent our issues. And that's what happened. And it's the same thing even to this day. Um, I tend to try and, um, try and attend all the RAC meetings that I can, even though Vance doesn't see me every now and then, because he's not there. <laughs> Uh, One meeting. It, it's fine. It's fine. But I try to tell folks whenever I go from Claremont to North Lake, I, I have to take about four hours. I have to go get coffee. I have to get gas a couple times just because it's so far away. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But no, I try to come up as much as possible and attend as many local uh, local um, government events as, as I can because it's very important. You have to know what's going on in your area before you can represent your whole district. And you know, it's because of that that we've seen what's happened in Mount Dora where you have a place that is budding, that was beautiful, that was conservative, and now it's it's not the same. You know, we need people who actually want to understand the issues that are going there and understand the actual pivotal issues like business development and not like having safe safe space tick stickers for your businesses. So so for me that's that's the number one thing you have to do. You have to know your district, you have to know the issues of the people who live here, um, and you have to actually be present at any of those meetings that you can be. Um, for the future. So, did I miss anything? Uh, no, sir. That was okay. perfectly fine. Yeah, but I'm saying, you guys, very sometimes good. you know you're. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you. Thank you very much. Can I amplify on that? I did ask for specific okay. oh. city related or local government related legislative yeah. priorities yeah. and that's yeah. what and I'm obtain at. their legislative priorities. Yeah, so for, for Claremont, I think one of the biggest things that we were looking to do in the past was revitalization of downtown and we've started to do that. For those of you who have been to Claremont and seen the downtown area, it's obviously budding. Um, one of the biggest things, and I think every single city within Lake County will say this, is growth. Um, a lot of people come to Lake County. A lot of people like Lake County. Um, sometimes I'm like, you guys can go somewhere else, but that's fine. <laughs> but with that obviously comes a lot of challenges, and, and whether it's traffic, whether it's growth and development, they're things that a lot of cities are now focusing on, on either trying to slow down or either trying to make sure they're doing it in a smart way. 
Um, so, City of Claremont, a couple of years back, we actually had the moratorium that said, hey, look, if you're doing uh, multifamily housing, you have to slow down. We want to make sure we can adjust and we can plan for it. And we, we were able to plan for it. So now they've slowly started to take in a little bit more projects. And we've seen cities like Leesburg do it as well. So I know that's a very big issue for a lot of these different uh, municipalities. Um, and I know for the future, you know, agriculture is going to be another thing that we're going to be looking at. Um, and developing is really the biggest thing. So a lot of people don't want Lake County to be like Orange County, which is completely understandable. Uh, we don't want it to be like even Lake Nona, where there you just have developers who are throwing money left and right and just erecting buildings when they can. So it's very important to make sure that our development and um, the process of our development is in a good place for the future. So. Those are a lot of the legislative properties that you see a lot of municipalities looking at now. Thank you very much, sir. And you as well, sir. So the same question. What was the city council or local government agency meetings you have attended and obtained legislative priorities? And of those priorities, what priorities from those meetings will you support? Uh, last year, uh, we attended um, a delegation of legislative uh, session in Leedsburg. We also not only attend, but organize people to go to the hearing for the turnpike. We, we believe that's one of the, our priority. Turnpike collect $1.1 billion last year, only less than a quarter allocated to the maintenance and repair. More than half, $630 million, they end up with profit. We look into the situation, financials, cover to cover, we want to take care of that. We also went to different hearing of local infrastructure. We all, we all know in Lake County and Orange County, we definitely need local inf infrastructure to catch up. I heard from um, residents all the time, even today, earlier, we had the conversation, the traffic on 27, the traffic on 50 is so crazy. We, have, we can't always play catch 22. We have to be out there plays ahead of time and deliver ahead of time. Um, besides that, my, uh, my priority for our district, for we have three priorities, I think benefit our residents. First <coughs> is the toll situation. Second is lowering prescription medication. We Americans pay three times for the same prescription medication compared to Europeans. And in Florida, we have a lot of people retired here. So we, we, people shouldn't choose between medication and food on the table. We're going to take a look into that too. And the, the third thing is homeowner insurance crisis. We all know after the hurricane, a lot, when we knock on doors, we heard a lot of um, uh, people talking about whether they can't get any company uh, to send a proposal or they only have two companies in this area. There are no competition, no transparency. So we want to uh, lower, we want to fix the insurance, homeowner insurance crisis. Those are my priorities. Wonderful. All right, thank you both for those wonderful answers to those questions. All right, so uh, this one I would like to ask because it is uh, one that I did not catch until later. Are you aware of Live Local? And will you fight back against it? Uh, if the person that uh, wrote that. The Live Local Act of 2023. Uh, yeah. Could you explain what that is, ma'am? Uh, well, it's where developers. <coughs> they should explain it. Yeah, they yeah, Oh, yeah. Really. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. That's fine. I can do that. Oh, yeah, so, so, all right. I, was just <laughs> I, can do it. I can do it. So, the Live Local Act was the new, I guess you could call it affordable housing policy initiative that was put forth by the Florida State House and the Florida State Senate. And essentially what it is, is it actually takes powers away from local governments. Yes, um, so and as conservatives, that kind of worries me. And as a local elected yes. official, it kind of worries me yes. because we want to continue to keep government small. So essentially developers can come in, they can look at a project and say, this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do, even if it doesn't follow your municipal um, planning and housing codes um, and essentially just takes from them. So it's something that I understand the need for because we obviously want people to be able to purchase housing and have housing, but at the same time, just giving that money and un uncontrolled power to developers is not the proper ideal. So uh, for me, I, it's, it's something that I definitely would love to work on. Um, and my Bowen has, has alluded to it as well. The housing insurance market itself is crazy right now. Um, and what people don't realize is the housing insurance 
problem isn't just a housing problem, it's actually a family problem as well. Because if we want our younger generations to actually have good family values, have a family, raise a family, have something for the future, if they don't know what they're going to do in terms of living together, what's, what's going to happen? You know, they're, they're going to end a, hit a dead end. So this is all a problem that circles <clears throat> together. Um, and until the legislature actually takes care of it and actually does what they're supposed to do, um, we're going to we're gonna see growing pains for the next couple of years. So, yes, I would definitely against yeah, the Yes, very much. Okay. <laughs> Can I just clarify, oh. that, add to that, so that both of you, I think you answered pretty good, but Tavares just had a developer come in, and I was at that meeting, and, and it's on their videos of their meetings, is that the developer came in and had been there before, made a pitch for a multi-story building with uh, quite a few apartments on Highway 19. Uh, they ended up turning it down because they thought it would increase traffic too much and so forth. But the developer had told them and even stated in the meeting, well then we could follow the Live Local Act, which means that uh, a if the land is oh, right. commercial or uh, industrial, it's zoned that way. If it's zoned that way, they can come in, make a deal with the, and buy the land, and start building, and no notifications go to the neighbors around them at all, wow. and they can build to the maximum height in the city and the maximum density in the city. So and they can like double the density that, that they propose. Yep. Well, and so it's it's it and it's starting to roll out, and so uh, the the law also said that they have to give, uh, the cities have to do a survey of all the land, lands that are eligible for that. Mm -hmm. And so the developers can look at it and say, oh, we'll go make a deal with this landowner, mm -hmm. we'll buy it. And if you're living next to what you think is going to be a commercial area, the next thing you know, you've got uh, five or four story apartment buildings, yeah. high density and with all the traffic, they don't have to go through any permitting any hearings at all. Yep. So you won't know about it. There's no orange sign out there or anything. Yep. So that's what the issue is. So now, and so maybe you can go on if you want to clarify something, but I think you both need to be aware of that. Real quick, I'll, I'll, and I'll, um, I'll give a quick example of it too. We've seen it in Claremont before, even before, even before the liberal was passed. Um, we've had it in the case where developers have come in and said, hey, like, you can deny this, but we're just going to sue you, take yeah. it to court, and then, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to happen. And they don't we, even have to sue. Yeah, they have the right to just do it. Yeah, and, and so now without that, the city can't even, your cities can't even make up a defense to kind of just be like, hey, like, we don't want this here. We can't, we can't physically take this, you know, <laughs> but money talks, unfortunately, so. Um, yes. it, no. Then isn't it true that they also get government funding? Um, I believe there might be some subsidies that are put aside for them. Yes. Wow. I believe there are. So not for the city. Not for the city's yeah. no. yeah. yeah. okay. okay. yeah. yeah. right. I'm done. Okay, well, guys. <laughs> good job. So on to the next one. Mr. Bowen, thank you for being patient on there. Are you aware of the Live Local Act and how will you fight back against it? Yes, I'm well aware of the situation and the uh, act. I'm sorry, so, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Oh, sorry. Oh, same question. So, question. it's the same question. Oh, okay. Are you aware of the Live Local Act and how will you oh, fight okay. against it? <laughs> so, first of all, I always promote smaller governments have, uh, so gave more rights and uh, more voice to the locals. We, we, live in, we live in Lake County, we don't want to be the part of Orlando Suburban. We want to, they continue to be a quiet, uh, have a good place to live with a family. You to be a, a, peop, a, a place with peace. I have a different approach on housing, on housing issues. I understand the growth in Central Florida, but we shouldn't rely on building more and more apartment complex, have a more condensed community. I, I was never a fan. I think that the approach should be lower the, the cost of homeowners yeah. expense. People, people always complaining about oh, it's high interest, high property tax, and they even can't afford the rent. But it all go back to the cost of owning a house. If you rent one, it's go back to what's the, your landlord's cost. <coughs> so to lower the housing cost, homeowner insurance need to take care of and 
to lower property tax mm -hmm. and all the tax. Even though as state legislator, we don't have a say on local property tax. However, we can have policies to cut government irresponsible spending and giving those tax back to the homeowners and the lower the cost of living. That's how the housing issue should resolve. Yeah. 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 Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for that. All right. So we have the next question. It's a very, uh, very simple one. How will you fix inflation? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. it's it's simple. Simple. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, very simple. Well, simple. Oh, man, and clear up the terms. Yes. Well, well. In your first term. I yeah, yeah, first term. Yeah, 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 first term. Right? First term. 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 First in their economic environment, and when I say that, I mean the state has done a very good job in the past of having tax-free weeks, whether it's for school supplies, whether it's for baby items, but making sure we can do more of that and actually making sure we can have residents want to spend their money and not just hoard it. Just want to actually spend it. Want to give but back to the community. Money? I know, right? Uh, the little money they what have. Money are we um, so it's one of those things. It's one of those things where. Uh, it's not a clear-cut answer at all, um, and I'll tell you, I am not the the best when it comes to economic economic policy. But I do know that I'm willing to actually get out there, ask the questions, um, and see what we can do to find good answers. I, I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all answer in this, but I do think that making sure there are incentives for um, for Florida <coughs> residents to actually go out and spend is going to be key to that itself. So. That's all I can say on that. Wonderful. <laughs> not a simple, uh, not a simple not solution. solution. <laughs> a simple question for not so simple yeah. solutions. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, Mr. Right. Bowen, you as well. Uh, how can you fix inflation? I think we have to understand that where the inflation come from. Inflation come from government Federal Reserve printing money from thin air to support their irresponsible spending at the state level. It's very limited to what I can do to fix inflation. But I tell that um, I can help to ease the financial burden of the inflation. Inflation impact the mid inflation is not a tax, but I like a tax especially to the middle class and to the poor. That's why ease the burden of the inflation is what I'm focused on. Um, it's go back to my agenda on economy. I, I think I'm the, the best person to come up with a policy helping uh, people have more money on the, in the pocket. For example, you, we want to take care of the, the uh, medication, the uh, prescription medication prices, the tolls, the homeowner insurance. Those are lower your daily expense and uh, we will have the um, tax holiday to cover, to reduce your tax on uh, essential goods like fuel, medication, and food. Is that awesome? Yep. Thank yep. you. All right. Thank you both very much. And again, a simple question with a wonderfully complex solution. All right. So this one, uh, this is a simple question probably with a pretty simple answer as well. What was your opinion on Biden's speech last night? <laughs> I think just like the rest of Americans, I, I fell asleep during it. So, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we've seen it. It's one of those things where they, well, he just comes up there and he kind of just mumbles on and on for a bit. Um, and I, I, as we all have seen, he's not... He's not a great leader. You know, we we need more, and we need better, and, and we need people who are actually going to step up, um, step up to the plate, and actually fight for our values and our policies. So I'll be happy this November when hopefully he is not in office anymore. Amen. <laughs> there it is. Amen. Praise Jesus. And you as well, sir. So one thing caught me last night was Biden have a moment like five seconds just stood there no silence, and then pick up a white button side Lincoln. I was like, give me a break. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, 
but I didn't laugh. Right. This silence is not from Biden, it's from our nation. Our nation elect him, at, at least elect him as our president. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, the question going to be back, what we gonna do? This November, we need our President Trump back into the office to fix our nation. For, exam for example, the, the border. Only Trump can fix the issue, and we need him back, like economy, too. So, <clears throat> when we knock on doors, we be outspoken, we be talk to our voters, not only promote our campaign, also promoting him, we need Trump back to the office so this na this nation can move forward. Right. Thank you. Amen. That's right. Can we switch it up and yeah, have yes, Mr. Sir. Bowen go first and then... Oh yeah, back into the hot seat, sir. Already, <laughs> all right. Already covered. All right, let's see here. Well, then we'll go with a simple one on here. So, how will you support small businesses in Lake County? Oh, I know small business. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's what I do. Free so, food. <laughs> so, I don't know if you know that or not, 80% of Florida state revenue come from sales tax. That's the reason we don't have an income tax. Mm -hmm. So a lot of meat, uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of small business in the state of Florida supporting, uh, collecting those sales tax for the state government. We can't afford small business in this state to go to be failed. Today, layer of layers regulation on small business, inflation, labor shortage, doesn't help small business. And, um, and they, instead, the government, instead of helping small business, they throw the final punch. They work with the big corporation and have them out-compete small businesses. Mm -hmm. So, when I get elected, I will remove unnecessary regulation on small businesses. Like my wife and I, we have a little bakery, Winter Garden, and uh, we have piles, piles of the paperwork. We are small business, we are not big corporation, they have a bunch of uh, lawyer, they have a bunch of HR, uh, whatever their department is. We are only a couple, we have to deal with that. So those things hurting small business, i give you another example. In Florida, we collect small business collect sales tax for the state uh, uh, um, state revenue department, and uh, nowadays everyone paying credit card. We have to make up the differences between how much we collect and how much we pay, because the credit card we have to make up the credit card fee for the sales tax we helped state to collect. If, if, if we small business have a responsibility to collect sales tax for the state government, I believe multi-billion credit card companies should hold the same responsibility. So I want to propose a bill to remove credit card fee on sales tax. That will help consumers, that will help small business owners to um, against the optical battle. Thank you. No trouble, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Ebo, the yeah. same question. How are you going to support small businesses yeah. in Lake County? I mean, small businesses are the lifeblood of our economy, period. Especially here in Lake County, where uh, in the past it was a lot of service-oriented businesses, um, and now we have agriculture as well. One of the biggest things that I think is going to be very important when we talk about the future is setting up our small businesses and also our youth for success. So what I'm proposing is I would love to have small tax credit or tax credits for small business owners who actually take the youth and actually help them and use them. Not necessarily child labor, but making sure, hey, you can learn from me to an extent. But you can learn from me. I can learn from uh, you. Can learn from me. You, know, you help me out, and because of that, you get a credit, which helps you either spend more, save more, and become more efficient in your businesses. So think of it like vocational training, but not just for trades. It would be for small business owners. Someone can learn from Mr. Co um, in his bakery, or even the financials of it. Someone can learn from uh, Vance in terms of being a fiscal watchdog. You know, there are different ways that this can be applied. But this is one of the things that I think is going to jumpstart not just our economy, but jumpstart our students. Because a lot of days, I'm a former teacher, a lot of days when you talk to these kids, you say, what do you want to be when you grow up? 
I want to be an influencer. Mm -hmm. I want to be a, be a, a YouTuber. You yeah. know, I want to be on TikTok. It's like no, that's that's not a real job. You have to, become, <laughs> you have to actually become a productive member yep. of society, and this is one of the ways you can do it. You can earn students will be able to earn credits um, and other opportunities, maybe even compensation. Business owners will be able to earn tax credits and actually be able to spend their money um, the way they want to and become more efficient in their business. So that is one um, one of the policy issues and. Uh, uh, objectives that I'm wanting to do when I get elected. Oh, so. okay. Thank you, sir. And if I may ask, I start with you now. So, are you an America First candidate? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. I am. So, is. I became a citizen in 2015, and I'll say uh, there are three days that are probably the happiest of my life. Um, if you ask my wife, She'll probably smack me, but I'll say getting married was the third one. Um, <laughs> winning a national championship was the second one, and becoming a U.S. citizen was the first. Um, my parents, like I said, came from West Africa, and my dad actually—it's funny—he he didn't wear shoes until he was 13 at his wife's at his mother's uh, his sister's wedding. Um, so because of that, they let me know every day. Hey, like like we said, nothing is promised, nothing is given. All you have is your faith and uh, the sweat on your back. So for them to take everything they had, move to Canada um, on a whim, uh, and then eventually move to Florida, um, it's one of the things where I know this is a, I'm damn proud of this place. <laughs> you know, it kind of gets me choked up, but I'm, I'm very, very proud to be an American. Um, and obviously we're not perfect, but we strive for, uh, we strive for it every day. Um, and Faith, liberty are probably the two things that are most important to me. So yes, I am an America First candidate. That doesn't mean everybody else is out the window, but we take care of our people first, and we make sure that our residents are good before we worry about anything else. So God bless. I have a question. Oh, uh, uh, now we'll have to wait till the end of that sort of thing. Oh no, asking uh, you guys a question. Like, uh, are we allowed to go after like when when we have a question right for candidates? Uh -huh. Kennedy answered. But can we allow them to go deeper that question to ask? Because some answers they give back, she we was, need to more clarify. So would probe. that allow them to you ask? You want to probe the answer? Yeah, yeah. Because because it sounds great. Some question answer sounds great, <laughs> but does it really make sense? You know, for small business, I would like to go after it. See what happened when we found out you were yeah. Yeah. the Canadian yeah. one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, are we allowed? So if allowed, I would like to ask additional question regarding the previous answer regarding that small business. Yeah. So I I would go ahead and write it down and hand yeah. it to him, and I'm then ask him yeah, and then we can even elaborate more. Right, because the, the, the issue I feel like, you know, a lot of times when politicians talk on TV, when people asking it, they're like, oh, that's, that answer sounds perfect, mm -hmm. but that would really apply in real life or not, you know, because yeah. I would like to know if those answers was really make a sense for small business or for any kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, because we have limited time, oh, yes. you yeah. yes. also ask them in a personal. Oh, that's right. That is actually oh, that is my yes. apologies. Actually, yes. on that, I have okay. got to announce afterwards. If yes. you ever, hopefully, you have also been possibly taking note of what they've been saying and something struck out to you. Yeah. If you want to talk to them on a personal level to get more in-depth answer on that sort of thing, yeah. obviously. They only have a limited amount of time to be up here, so we appreciate any sort of people that would be happy to talk to them afterwards once they've gotten the general conversation yeah. to everyone. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Mr. Bowen, you as well. Are you an America First candidate? Yes. With God help, America gave me the opportunity to have a beautiful family, a successful business, and mo most importantly, I live free in America. That's why. I want, I always put America first. And not only America first, since Florida is my home, I put Florida first too. I have a slogan, be bought, be bought, be proud, and put Florida first. So to answer the question, yes, we have to take care of our district, take care of America, before we can take care of somewhere else, like Ukraine. Right. That is, we have to secure, like, like it's simple common sense, we have to secure our own border mm -hmm. yeah. before we can be busy supporting somewhere else. Somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. And I will, I will have you go for this next question on here. What political offices or experience do you have previous to actually applying for this candidacy? None. <laughs> but I think it's a good thing. Like Trump never held any uh, politi political office before. I have no experience in political office, 
but I do have good experience in private sector. I'm happy to <coughs> compare my accomplishments with anybody in this race or in, the, in our government. I built a store 15 years ago, only with three employees and 2,000 square feet. I have to show a van, a, a white survey lane van, 3 a.m. from East Lansing, Michigan to Chicago, pick up meat, grocery, vegetables, and I drove, I drove back. Sometime in Michigan, it's icy, it's snowing, it wasn't easy and it's dangerous, but I put it up. That's why I, when I in government, I will, I will have the same commitment and energy to represent you as a successful small businessman. We've been door knocking, we've been talking to our voters, learn about the issues, and we put out signs, a lot of support. It doesn't come from, you know, laziness. It comes from hard working, and the hard working. The faith in God, the faith in hard working and the American value, that's the foundation of this country and I will keep hard working to represent you as a state senator. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And to you, Mr. Ebo, as well. What political office, uh, this is kind of an interesting thing on there, but uh, what political office have you held before and yeah. what experience do you have? Yeah, so uh, as I said earlier, I was the city, one of the city councilmen for the city of Claremont. I was able to serve two terms. Um, me being, when I first got elected, I was 25, 25 or 26, and now I am 30. So I, I don't know if you can call me a career politician because I've served two terms, uh, but I wouldn't consider myself to be that. So uh, like I said, being on city council for a number of years allowed me to learn more about municipal government, learn more about the issues that actually affect you all, whether it's your traffic, whether it's your trash coming on time, um, and now being able to take what I've learned from that and apply that at the state level um, is why I feel that I am the best candidate um, for this race. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's my time. I've loved municipal government. I love seeing you all in grocery stores asking me how my day is going, yelling at me sometimes, but for the most <laughs> part, but for the most part, it's been great. Um, and municipal government, the one that's closest to the people, is, is one of the most important, if not the most important. So, awesome. All right, wonderful. So the next question, I will actually start off with you, sir, as well. Uh, so do you accept any donations from out-of-state or lobbyist groups? And if so, why would you accept those donations from either lobbyist groups or out-of-state? So um, I have been extremely blessed to have met a lot of great people. Um, if you all look at my financial records, I have now over 150, I believe, unique donors. Um, and they're all people that I know. They're people who are local. They're people from the district. And if they're not, they're people that I've either gotten to school with, um, people that I've uh, known through work. Um, there is no lobbyist money that's coming to me. Um, yeah, there is no lobbyist money that is coming to me. Um, and I, like I said, I've been blessed to know a lot of people, to, to meet a lot of people. My parents said, hey, you know, no matter who you meet out there, they could influence your life in a way that you don't understand. So I always take every personal connection that I've met very seriously. Um, and that's why I'm very proud to have not taken any lobbyist money um, for my campaign. Um, it's a tough campaign. As you all know, I think yeah. you all understand, money money talks above all. Um, you know, And I know some of my opponents, um, Bowen's he's good, but I know one of my opponents cannot say the same, um, and that's, that's, if he wants, that's his prerogative, then that's what it is. Um, but for me, it really makes sense to actually accept um, contributions from people that I know, because it's not just, it's not just money. To me, it means it's an, an investment. If you are willing to write me a check, if you are willing to actually help me on this journey, that means that you believe in me and the mission that I'm serving, and I'm not just another number or another politician to you. So every check that I've received, I hold very near and dear. I make sure that those people get a handwritten signed card, even though my handwriting is not the best. I come from a doctor, what can I say? Um, but it really does mean the world to me. Um, and every, every dollar that I've connected just means so much more. So. Thank you very much, sir. And the same question to you, Mr. Bowen. So do you accept donations from out-of-state individuals or lobbyist groups? And if so, who and why would you accept these donations? I take zero dollars from lobby or special interest. And I made a commitment to not taking any money from lobby or special interest in this race. Out-of-state donation, yes. I have business in seven different states. I have friends, family who live in out of state. Yes, they are our donors. And I do believe every single candidate in this race has out of state donation.
but we don't have lobbyist donation. That's me. That's between me and the other co opponent who not so up today. Eighty percent of his it's public record. Eighty percent of his campaign funded by Tallahassee, which is those lobby and special interest. And it's about and it's about to become a dollar to dollar race. We don't have the money and the, uh, from lobby, which is an uphill battle to against those establishments. That's why we are on the ground every day, knocking doors, hear from people, promote our conservative, uh, conservative value and what we are able to do for the people. That's what we, we are focused on and uh, win the, hopefully that will win the race. All right, thank you everyone very much. All right. So, let's see. I will save that for translation later. All right. So, all right. What is your and funny enough, my mother calls right there as well. All right. So, what is your stance on free and fair elections? What will you do to improve the process, Mr. Bond? You can start on this. Free and fair elections are most important. Quite most important issue. Like last election, twenty. I'm talking about twenty twenty. We still have questions to ask. The election meant to be on the election day, and the, the results should be on the same day. Some states, they drag, not days, they drag weeks, months, to have, to, to have a result they want to be. So in Florida, at the state legislature, we can't make it, we can't let it happen in our state of Florida. We, we did better compared to a lot of states. But there is always room to improve. For example, overwhelmingly, if overwhelmingly people want hand count the ballot, then my job is deliver this bill to the to the Senate floor, and then we will actively work on it. What we want the last is unsecure and unclear, no transparency on the elects on the. Um, Election day, we have to come up with a result, not mm -hmm. let this drug like week and weeks. Thank you. What a that was the rain bill on there. <laughs> All right, so same to you, Mr. Ebo. Yeah. What is your stance on free and fair elections, and what will you do to improve the process? Yeah, I, I think me and Bo's answers go hand in hand. You know, they're the bedrock of our society. If you have a government or an institution that can come in and essentially rig a democratic vote, that is that is the complete opposite of America and liberty. Um, so it's very important to make sure that as uh, election days come and go, we have uh, consistency, uh, making sure that you know whether it's one, two, three different counties, there are hand counted ballots, making sure it's not from a third party, making sure that if a company is working on our election um, election machines, it's an American based company that has been thoroughly vetted. Um, and I've already pledged to make sure that if I am elected, I will initiate a bill that will have a random county throughout the state of Florida have a audit every single time um, and make sure that those votes are hand counted uh, by an impartial county, by an impartial party. So um, it's a simple. Uh, I think it's a simple answer. I think it's a simple. Uh, it, it's a simple um, question as well. You know, our elections are extremely important, and without them, we're nothing. So. Well, thank you very much. That is a good I answer. Say that was going next to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking. Nancy's on, on to our system. Yeah, he's on to our system. <laughs> <laughs> it took less than an hour to train them. All right. Well, this one, then I won't keep you standing for too long. Okay. Stuff. Do you currently live in Lake County? Yes, I do. Um, so I am a resident of Claremont, Florida. My wife and I actually have a house that's right by uh, downtown Claremont. We've been there, been in Claremont for over 23, 23 years now. Oh, man, time is... Wow. Uh, and yeah, man, it just makes me think about it because it's been 20 years and now I have my own hey, family wait, that's coming. It gets worse. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, Claremont's been my home. My parents still live there. My in laws still live there. And we'll live there for, for a number of years down the line. So. Oh, God bless. All right. So, same to you, Mr. Bowen. Do you currently live in Lake County? We live in Orange County, also in our district. But. I spend my most of the time in Lake County from day to the night. So we we hear from Lake County. We have um, 
spend a lot of time in Lake County to address to address those issues people care about the most in Lake County. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. So next, what do you believe is the top issue affecting Lake County right now, and how will you correct it? You sir. You sat down. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm keeping you here okay, up so in the day. I thought we were trained. Yeah. <laughs> I, for what I have been heard and my opinion is prescription medication. I know this subject not a lot of people talk about, but I want to talk about and address it. Not only Americans paying three times for the same prescription compared to Europeans. And those pharmaceutical companies, their headquarters, their production in America, they have no reason to turn around to selling to sell Americans the most expensive expensive drug, period. When I look deeper to the issue, I find out pharmaceutical company funded two thousand four hundred state lawmakers campaign, <laughs> including our opponent not here. And they spend over seven hundred million million dollars lobbying their favorable favorable policy. That's how they can keep charging. They can profit all from the people. In Florida, Central Florida, we have a lot of senior senior residents rely on those prescription medications. Sometimes they have to switch different health care plan. They have to, you know, get get uh, medication online from overseas which is not safe but the fix I believe is very simple <coughs> just allow Florida pharmacies to be able to import medication from European Union that could save Floridians 70 percent on prescription medication and I believe when that bill passed we don't have to import anything because the pharmaceutical company will have no choice but match the price to Europeans. So um, that's the top thing we want to address. And um, we all Republicans talk about cut tax, cutting tax, but how? 30% of tax dollar today spent on healthcare issues. If we can lower prescription medication by 70%, Imagine how much tax we can save and giving back to the people. You may your medication may covered by insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, but Medicaid, Medicare are exhausted in this country. Insurance premium is go higher and higher. So lower those medication costs will help Medicaid, Medicare, and the lower pre the insurance premium. That's the top issue. I think really benefit Central Florida. And I'm the only person talking about this. We can tell you almost had 30 seconds to go. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Ebo, uh, yes. also same question. What do you believe is the top concern in Lake County and the issue? How will you fix it? Yeah, so there, there are a couple that are on my mind at this time. Um, a lot of people don't realize it, but like I said before, I worked in education, and especially in Lake County. Lake County is actually at the bottom half in terms of one, educational attainment, and two, uh, money per pupil that is, that is used. Um, you know, for a, a county that has seen so much growth, it shouldn't be that way. Our students should be at the top um, and continuing to climb. So for me, making sure that our education system, especially in the county, is, is at the top of its peak is going to be extremely important. There's no reason why we're falling behind to Orange County, to Miami Day, to Polk. You know, we're, I mean, we all know this. We're, we're better than them. You know? <laughs> Sorry, but we're better than them. Uh, to make, so making sure that our, our, uh, our school and our education system is in a good, good position is going to be one of the key ideas. Um, one of the other things that we look at actually is human trafficking. Um, for those of you who don't know, Central Florida is actually at the top in terms of human trafficking cases and issues that are happening to our children. So making sure we're protecting our children, cracking down on these traffickers, um, and making sure that they're getting their just desserts um, and put away for a very long time is what we need to do. Because like we talk about here in the state, law and order. You know, this is not a place of lawlessness. You know, you do the crime, you do, you do the crime, you do the time. And um, we've actually seen it. I don't know if you all have seen it, but in, in, uh, I want to say it was New York. They were talking to either the AG there or the Attorney General there or something, and they said, you know, we've got traffickers and illegals who will do their business there, and then they'll come here to Florida, and then they automatically goes back, go back. And the reporter was like, 
why do they go back? And it's like, well, in Florida, if they catch you, you're done, you're done. you know? <laughs> and we want to make sure we continue that trend Enforcing. going down the road, you know? So that's, those two are the biggest issues. Um, and then obviously housing insurance is one of the ones that we know. Um, we can talk about it all day, but it is one of the things that really, really is hurting our residents um, and our economy, so. All right, let's see. <laughs> Too many Canadians trafficked here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's a big, that's a big, that's a big, that's a big issue. Uh, well, so, uh, this will be a question, obviously, sorry. Yeah, well, the train's falling off. It's like, uh, uh, all right, so, are you, Mr. Ebo, are you in favor of hand counting and getting rid of machines for the election process? Yeah, so we talked about this a little bit. I think, and we've, we've even seen this since the dawn of time, electronics shouldn't be there to scare us, you know, but we need to make sure that if we are using them, they're properly vetted, they're properly audited, and they're actually in a place. It shouldn't be the end-all be-all. Hands are going to be the best thing at the end of the day, but if, say, there's way too many or say that we need an assistance, I'm perfectly fine with continuing using electronics, but I do think hand-counted ballots will be the most um, consistent um, uh, election um, method for uh, counting votes. Wonderful. Thank you very much, sir. And Mr. Bowen, the same to you. Do you believe that we should focus on hand counting ballots and get rid of machines for the election process? So hand counting ballots is important. It's the honesty, it's the transparency. We should have hand counting ballots to you know to be audited in any political election. Machinery is good, it's fast. They claim it's accurate, but no one knows. So that's why we should have a hybrid system to have election the the um you, the machinery count the ballot, but always follow up with hand counted audit. That's what we try to do. All right. Thank you. Thank you both very much. And uh, well, I'm gonna say the <laughs> yeah. really, We gotta do the carrot more donuts over here. No, but uh, so what is your opinion on term limits for all offices that are elected? I'm all for term limit. Like I said, being uh, official, it shouldn't be a career, it should be call of duty. I'm not looking for a job, I hope everyone who elected not look this position as a job or a career. So I'm all for term limit in every single elected official position. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And you as well, Mr. Yes, Evo. Me what is sir. your opinion on term limits? For yeah. elected officials. So, so even on city council for Claremont, um, I think it was recently actually four or six years ago is when we just enacted term limits. So it's one of the things that we need everywhere. Doesn't matter if you're a school board member, doesn't matter if you're a county commissioner, doesn't matter if you're a dog catcher. You should not be in a place for more than ten years, if that. You know, I I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> You know, a lot of people say for millennials, it's like, oh, you guys move from job to job to job. And I'm like, I don't know how people stay in office for 20 years, you know, whether it's in Congress. You know, people got sworn in before I was born and are still there. Um, or even if it's uh, even if it's the school district. So no, 100% for term limits for everybody. We all need new, fresh ideas that are coming in and new energy. So, And if, you know, in the case that somebody gets in there that we don't like, then we just vote them out. So. They want to die in office. Literally, they want to die. No, no, thank you. <laughs> so, that's what I mean. Donuts right, yeah, for both. Donuts for both. All right. So we have a question here. Is it true that Lake County is number three in ranking for human trafficking? I'm assuming that's a reference to the Lake County in Florida's level of that. Yes. And what can you do possibly to fix that? Yeah, so, so like I said, Central Florida is right at the top for that. It, it is true, unfortunately. Um, and it kind of works together just because with Orlando in this area being such a hub for social events, whether it's NBA, whether it's all-star games, that's what happens. Disney. People come Disney. Disney. Yeah. Disney. Disney. Disney's a big one. Disney, yeah. even Universal. Um, it is yeah. a hotbed for it. So the biggest thing that we need to do is make sure that we're continuing to crack down on it. I actually spoke with the state attorney general um, in Central Florida, Mr. Bain. He's a new one there. Um, and he said that, you know, they're, they're implementing basically not, not like the opposite of a catch and release. If you've been caught for this, you're staying in there for as long as possible. And we're going to make sure that you're being punished for, um, for these transgressions that you put forward. So it's the same. It should be the same here. And luckily, you know, we do have a great uh, sheriff, Sheriff Grinnell, and he's done a really good job in making sure that we're cracking down on it. But I do still think there's more that can be done. We need to save our children and make sure that, you know, they're not being led astray. Thank you very much, sir. 
And Mr. Bowen, same question to you. Is it true that Lake County is number three in ranking for human trafficking? And if so, what can you do to limit or stop that? Yes. Human trafficking is a major issue in Central Florida, and I have it's in my heart, even though um, I'm not a, a, a elected official yet. My wife and I, we involved in nonprofits uh, with Courage of Free in Lake County. We do donations, volunteer for them to build a house, to give help to um, uh, people who are underage and being human trafficked in this area. And um, after, um, when I get elected, I will take a different uh, approach. A lot of time, those buyers behind made the issue more, made the, the issue serious in, in Lake County. Think about this, it's all about supply and demand. If nobody buying, then there won't be a, a, a market, there won't be a problem. So today in our state of Florida, we don't have a stiffer law for people, let's say, who buy those young kids. That's a problem. We should, we should make a law to you know, look at the situation, they should be the, they should be the criminal behind the theme too. Yeah. And, uh, we should, away right now. Yeah. and uh, we should they hold our hotels, our business accountable. A lot of time yeah. we've been, we been talking to a lot of girls we, since we uh, volunteering. A lot of people, the hotel knows about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People try to come mm -hmm. in, but uh, mm -hmm. they don't want to report if they active hidden this issue, they should be penalized too. Yes. Yeah. They are part of the business. Yes. So we have to make some bold change on this issue and helping human trafficking, not to mention the illegal immigration come to this state. Mm -hmm. We have to stop that. They could be human traffickers. So Florida, we don't want illegal immigra immigrants come to our state and we will, we will, we will stop human traffickers in our term. Thank you. God bless. All right, so this next question, I am not too familiar with it myself, but the recalling of the constitutional officer. Uh, I asked that question. Uh, what would you like to say on that one? Well, there actually was a bill that passed the House last year in May that allowed us in, in the state of Florida to recall our constitutional <coughs> officers, which include our sheriff, oh, yeah. our supervisor of elections, and um, tax collector, constitutional yeah. officer. Right. Oh, right. So those those three rules. positions uh, are elected constitutional officers, and we should be able to recall them and not have to wait eight years. You know, I understand people arguing for term limits, but if that guy gets in there and he's cheating day one, he needs to come out day one. So what happened? It was passed 117 to three people didn't vote. And it gets over to the Senate, and this is one of those attaboy issues where uh, the Senate kills it in the Rules Committee. That's where things go to die, is in the Senate. <laughs> so the Senate yeah. Rules Committee, I don't know how you get there from here, but <laughs> so. So having an explanation of that, uh, actually I'll switch over since you seem to have a good grasp on that yeah, sort of yeah. thing, sir. Uh, so for recalling the constitutional officer, would you support a bill to be reassigned for that so that we can, in fact, <coughs> recall them if they are failing at their duties before honestly, It's a no-brainer. Yeah, honestly, I mean, why stop at constitutional officers? It should be everybody. Well, it includes county is, commissioners, too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay, yeah, okay. But even then, I would still go down to municipal at that point as well. Yeah. Cause let me ask for that bill. Was the were you supposed to get fifty percent to to sign a petition similar to how California I does it? Or I it? think that the wording of the bill was very simple. Okay. Okay. To basically use what was already there. Got it. And just insert. Okay. Constitutional Got officers. It. Okay. okay. So whatever gotcha. methodology was there, we're gotcha. just applying the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't see why not. It also depends on if it's a chartered or uncharted county. Okay. I so a few variables on there. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I don't see why not. Again, if, if the residents are not happy with the job that their elected official are doing, doesn't matter if they're constitutional, doesn't matter if they're on a, on a city council, they should have the right to challenge that. 
They should have the right to challenge that. And like you said, that's how it goes in Florida. You know, if the House passes it or if the Senate passes something, it goes to the other side. All it takes is, fortunately, a cabal to say, no. <coughs> it's gamesmanship. No, it's fine. It is. Yeah, and we need These somebody. guys look good, pat themselves on the yep. back, and these guys kill it. Nobody exactly. knows. And, and that's why we need somebody who is who understands and is able it. to get there and say, "Hey, I, I no, cannot we're imagine not having an elected official. You cannot recall." Yeah, yep. That man has all yeah. the power yeah. in the yeah. world, and it's wrong. Yep, exactly. Right. Thank you very much, sir. And the same to you, Mr. Bowen, for the recalling of constituted officers. Do you believe that should be a law for anyone who has failed at their duty for the people of Lake County or Florida in general? Yes, anyone failed to serve our community. When, uh, even after they are elected, we should have a way to challenge them. And if necessary, we should have a way to remove it. But that's back to the root. I want to go back to the root of how this thing even be there. After I get into this campaign, I learned that career politicians, they all connect to each other. Mm -hmm. Like we are talking about um, tax collectors, we're talking about sheriff, we're talking about supervisor of elections. When our opponent, career politician, announced, announced get into this seat, mm -hmm. two out of three people endorse him right away mm -hmm. on the same day. Why digging into this question even deeper, I like to dig, I, I read a <laughs> lot of material cover to cover. My opponent voted yes, yes, for pension bonus to state employees with a, 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 a especially elected a, a office so officers who does have pension nowadays, and they want three times pension bonus. Someone in Lake County get over a million dollar pension bonus because of that bill. Politicians, they know how to take care of themselves. <laughs> when inflation came, they come up with a bill, sugar coating it, mm -hmm. vote all yes, and they get the pension bonus. They enjoy the, the life afterward. But they leave us hanging there. Mm -hmm. And then they protect each other. That's why I'm different. I'm not looking for my interest or job or career or get rich <coughs> in the position. I'm looking for serving you. I want to keep the transparency. That's why I, when the bill come to me, I probably the only person vote for no on that bill. But sometimes one is on every one make differences, and I will be outspoken. I will sharing where I am, why we want to vote no on that bill, so other district people can give their pressure to their state senator to make things happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time here. We have some questions that were asked. They were a little more poignant towards one candidate in particular. I would like to ask, firstly, are you okay with having giving him the floor for these certain questions? And Mr. Bowen, yes. for these questions that are going to come up, obviously none of them seem to be very attackative on their own sense, which, yet again, this was not intended as a debate. It is purely as an a more personal, informational thing, less of a grandiose speech, and then he walks off the stage. It's a time for you to ask these sort of questions and get a true answer in a healthy, happy environment amongst Republicans, amongst people with the same mentality on things. So, I would like to ask if you are okay with answering certain questions, yes. such that may relate to it. Oh, seems my time is up. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. See, I keep myself on time here. No. All right. So, firstly, uh, classic. Yes. <laughs> So let's Too see. Here. So we will go on here first. So, Mr. Bowen, uh, you will be the uh, man on the spotlight for this one. So the first question was, why don't you have your last name on your signs? Why do you go by your first name? My first name is easier to remember. <laughs> how do you yes. say your last name? Bowen Cole. 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 Yeah, like like, like, like David Cole. Allen. But People that's like you. That's musical. My first name is easier to remember and easier to pronounce. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's the whole reason behind it. And I believe Ebo campaigning on his first name too for the same, maybe for the same reason, but uh, he can answer that oh, himself. Thank you. About to say, Mr. Ebo, would you like it's to add in? Yeah, no, I mean, it's essentially the same. I mean, Ebo, Bo Ebo. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty quick. So it just flows better. I mean, you could say Bo Ebo and Sua, but I mean, most people, for most people, it's Ebos. 
easier. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, both of you, for that. This is this is the type of cooperation we enjoy, especially on this. We have a lot coming up this year. We need Republicans to be united in cause yes. against forces that are not exactly so united and most certainly happy to divide us wherever they can. So this is the type of interaction we like. All right, so let's see here. So for Mr. Bowen, yet again, are you going to donate your entire salary for the full term that you are in office? Yes. All right, wonderful. And that is in reference to him donating to uh, what is the organization against? Okay, I made a commitment since I jumped in this race, donate my entire salary to the Sheriff Association. I have a reason behind it. We always remember and making donations to the Sheriff Association anyway, any, uh, uh, every year anyway. I made the commitment because in Central Florida we are growing so fast. And I, I have experience living in Chicago. Sometimes people robbed or are stealing from my store. I have to personally be there to stop them. And the police officer told me, oh, it's dangerous, you shouldn't do that. I was like, I'm a small business owner. I can't afford to lose a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. Big corporation, they may be afforded, but law is not on their side. So they told me that, oh, it's Bowen, it's not like I don't want to help you. Two reasons I can't. First of all, the law is not on their side. Right. And second, they are all numbered. That's why I will fight for the enough funding for police officers to make sure they have the right equipment, the right number of people to keep us safe. We can't let them to be outnumbered outnumbered by criminals. That's what happened in New York and Chicago. That's why people are moving out. Thank you. That's right. Wonderful. Thank you very much, sir. Not until you read Bowen. Oh, certainly. <laughs> All right, so the next question for you yet again, Mr. Bowen. So why do you feel that you should go for state senate being that you have only been a country a certain amount of time? I've been here 15 years. I came to America when I was 19 and um, I was a teenager, so I have unique experiences, understand entry level, and later on when I develop my business, I have experience on how business should grow. I live in a few places too, so I understand what state policy hurting family and small business, what helping us. So my unique perspective is it's well gave us benefit in this community and um, what's the second part of the question? Oh, I just, uh, I just said <laughs> Oh, sorry. So, uh, why do you feel that you should run for state office being that you have only been in this country for a limited amount of time? Yes, but my, my experience are rich. So, by we can, and also for this seat, why state, I get that question a lot, why state senator? You can run for city council, state, house, but why this seat? Because a lot of my policy and the solutions I can deliver in this seat. State Senate is a smaller club, 40 of us. I have policies for the state, benefit this district for the same reason state senator will give me the opportunity to follow through these uh, policies. Thank you. I think you just keep saying, and they're all for you. That's all. <laughs> no, but uh, so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Co. Mr. Bowen, are you aware of any donations from non-U.S. citizens? As there is a con as you have contribution list on, and several of the names appear to be of foreign nature, possibly of, of your own descent. In the beginning, I jumped in the race. I call all my friends, family, who I do business with, our vendor to support me. A lot of them are supporting us for the same reason. They may, they are Chinese American and they understand the other side. They don't want socialism in this country. They are just like me. Our family in America, our business in America, and our future is America. In America, this is our home. So when I decide to run, I think they believe in me, have the right purpose, the reason to do so. That's why they donate to us. So those names may not sound like American name, but America is a country of melting pot. They are American, 
they are allowed to donate to my campaign and that's what we promoting supporting us financially have contribution to our campaign that will help us together because if we don't then career politicians they, their lobby will pouring in their resources to them and the career politicians will get elected thank you sir and this is the final one yet again for Mr. Buckland. <laughs> it seems that there is quite an interest in your background on that. So, for Mr. Bone, it is well known for pro it is well known in China that residents relate to Chinese to Chinese to Chinese Americans that they hold relatives hostage in the Chinese uh, government and use it to act in the CCP, the Communist Party of China's interest. How will you avoid this blackmail that could be practiced by Xi Jinping's? Communist Party. First of all, me and my family, we are not, we are never a member of CCP. I can put that on the right word. And for the safety concern, we be prepared. The day before I, I decide to run this race, I talk to my parents. I said, look, I believe God leading me to do this. I want to be outspoken. I can do it in China. I want to help him and give him back to this country. My, my parents said, go ahead. We support him. Even though they understand the risk. And matter of fact, this risk comes from them. They want me to be outspoken. They want me to be active. If anything happened to my parents, that's the possibility some people worry about. But remember, we are American. We don't negotiate with terrorists. Regardless where I stand, or what's my policy, or my personal testimony, people, the government shouldn't take hostages on my parents. I'd be outspoken if that happened. I will keep you guys informed if that happened. But we pray to God it's never happened. And my parents, all since I'm an American citizen, my parents are their immigration, legal immigration process <coughs> has begun. And um, hopefully once they get their status here, that will eliminate this issue entirely. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of your questions. Are there any more that would be on there? But for now, I thank both the candidates for showing. Ultimately, you both are the wonderful example of the Republican Party on it. It is not based on, as many other Many other groups would like to indicate the Republican Party is. We're not based on one single group, on one single type of mindset. It's solely for an American experience. You believe in America and the ideals that was originally set for, and we will fight as hard as we can to continue that, whether it be for president or for district. And we appreciate both of you fighting as hard as you can for that. Thank you very much. And thank you all for being here. Have a blessed day.